All right, this first example, we're going to, um, this is an example of a conservation of energy problem. I'm going to use this to go through the steps that you should follow when solving a, an energy problem, essentially. Okay, so here we have um, a ball that is being launched somehow. Maybe somebody gives it a good kick um, up into the air at a speed of 8 meters per second. Please note that I'm not giving you the angle, but turns out we're not going to need it. It flies through the air and I want to know how fast it's moving when it is one meter above where it started. Okay, now this is a problem that you could have solved with kinematics if you knew the angle. Um, we could have figured it out. You would have had to find the initial velocity in the y direction, initial velocity in the x direction. You would have had to use the y direction and one of the kinematics equations to find the time it took to get to this height the second time, because it's on the way back down again. Um, then you would have had that time, could use that to find its velocity in the y direction, its velocity in the x direction, and then combine those two with the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the total like speed, the total velocity. That's a lot of work, and it requires that you have the angle. I want you to see how much less work it is to do this with energy stuff, energy concepts, and we don't even need the angle. Okay, so step one is um, define your system. This becomes really important sometimes. Basically, you're going to choose your system boundaries. What I mean by that is what is included in your system. So for this one, it's going to be the ball and the earth. That's my system like this ball and the whole entire planet Earth. I'm including Earth so that the force of gravity on the ball is internal to the system, which means if the Earth is part of the system, gravity is internal to the system, that means that there is um, there are no forces external to the system. Like there are no other forces going on here. This is after it's been kicked, there's no like kick force or whatever. Um, we're ignoring air resistance, there's no friction, no, no kinetic friction. So I am choosing the system so that there are no forces external to the system, which means I can invoke the conservation of energy. Okay, so next step is um, you want to choose an initial configuration and a final configuration. What I mean by that, configuration, yeah, that's how you spell that. Okay, what I mean by that is basically where you want your system to start and end. So for instance, on this problem, I'm going to call the ball being here, that's like my initial configu configuration. I guess I should call it initial, not one. Oop, didn't mean to erase the ball. I just want to erase here. There we go. Now I can use it as an actual eraser. Um, I'm going to call that initial. Basically, this is my initial and this is my final. Okay. Um, basically, pick two places. You might have to draw two separate pictures, um, but pick two places, a final place and a, an initial place. Okay. Just pick them. Usually you want to pick one of these has the thing you're trying to solve for. So I'm trying to solve for the velocity here. That's part of my final configuration, so that's good. And the other one you want to know like as much as you can possibly know about it. Like I know the speed there. I also know the height there. I'm going to go ahead and choose the ground to be a height of zero, which means my initial height is going to be zero and my final height is going to be one meter because that distance is one meter. Okay, so choose your initial final configuration um, and and I guess state givens, I guess, yeah, put that there. So what, that's what I mean by basically that makes my initial velocity eight meters per second, my initial height zero, my final height one and my final velocity essentially is what I don't know. Okay. Okay, step three is to 
write your uh, statement of what's going on with the energy. So like, this is a conservation of energy problem. There's two things I could write. I could write something like E equals constant, okay? Or I could say something like delta E equals zero. Basically some statement that um, there are no external forces no external forces so total energy is stays the same. Now later we're going to do other problems where there are external forces and you would have a different statement here but, and th but this is where that statement would go. So there are no external forces so total energy is constant. Um, you can say that in words you can say there are no external forces and then just write E equals constant or delta E equals zero, but you really should be very, very clear and explicitly state that there are no external forces. Um, like make that part of your showing of work because on AP problems, often if you're, if this was an AP type problem, um, if you don't make that statement, you will lose a point, okay? You can't just say energy is constant. You have to tell me because there are no external forces, energy is constant. Like, those go together. They both need to be said, okay? So you say them, okay? Now, the last step, okay, it's actually coming off of one of these mathematical statements here. So I'm going to go with um, E equals constant. I'm, now this becomes a personal preference thing. From step three, where you go from here really is a stylistic choice about how you want to show your math. Personally, I like the E equals constant because that means EI equals EF. And stylistically, I like to go this way. But also, some people like to do delta E equals zero, and then they'll write things like delta UG plus delta K equals zero. Like that will be their path. I like to do it this way, EI equals EF, which means the gravitational potential energy of the system initially plus the kinetic energy of the system initially should equal the gravit, <coughs> excuse me, the gravitational potential energy of the final configuration plus the kinetic energy of the final conf oops, final configuration. So stylistically, I like to go this way. If you were going this way stylistically, it would say something like mg delta h plus one half um, m v final squared minus v initial squared like that equals zero. Um, eventually, like these are gonna look the same. That's supposed to be an initial and that looks really stupid, okay. There we go. Like if you look at these two equations, they work out, they, they are stating the same thing. They just look a little different. That's what I mean by stylistically. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, give myself a little more room here. Um, actually, no wait, not yet. Um, but either way, either style, you write that down and then you start plugging things in. I start with zeros to get rid of terms completely. For example, my initial height is zero, so this entire term is just gone, okay? Um, my final velocity, I don't know, um, so that's about all I can get rid of. On this style over here, what would happen is the mg delta h that would come down to just being mg um, h final, okay? mv final squared minus, I guess I'm doing this problem twice right now. <laughs> okay, um, at this point you can either solve for what you want, which is usually a good idea if you can, like solve for what you want first and then put numbers in, um, or you can put numbers in now and then solve. Note that I can divide everything by m and the m's will go away. That doesn't always happen. 
in energy problems, so be careful, but it very often happens in energy problems. So don't be afraid if in a problem like they don't give you the mass, just go with it. Leave it mass as an M and probably that M is going to cancel eventually. Um, same with over here, if I divided the whole thing by M, I'd end up with those gone and 0 over M, which is 0 over here. So those, will, those, are, those are gone too. Okay, so either one I can solve for, um, I can now solve for final velocity, that's what I'm looking for. So on this style, what I've got now is 1 half VI squared. I'm going to subtract GF from both sides. I'm oh, sorry, not GF, GHF. That gives me 1 half VF squared. On this one, um, I've got GF. I need to distribute that 1 half. So I've got plus 1 half VF squared. Uh, minus one half do, 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 vi squared equals zero. I know this is confusing. I'm literally doing two problems side by side, just in two different styles. Some of you might be confused. I apologize. Um, so over here, that means I've got vi squared minus two gf final equals vf squared. On this side, I would. I'm going to move this term over to the other side and I get gf uh, minus one half vi squared equals one half v final squared. And look, this is actually, these, those are equivalent. See, so yeah, this style has now, it now looks like this style. So I'm going to stop doing the right hand side and continue with the algebra on, on the left hand side. See those two lines are really, um, oh sorry I lost a negative right there, there we go. When I moved this over I subtracted it. So those two lines are really the same line. Here I go boop, boop, yeah, um, and then boop. Those are the, those are the same line. So I'm just going to continue over here and I end up with uh, the final velocity is the square root of initial velocity squared minus 2 ghf, which for this problem is 8 meters per second, the whole thing squared, minus 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared times height final is 1 meter. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, that gives me equals whatever that is, I guess. Make sure the units work. I've got um, meters squared per second squared going on over here and meters times meters over second squared going over here. So that's that's going to work. My units are going to be meters squared per second squared here. If I do out this math, I in here I end up with 44.4. Um, okay which gives me the square root of 44.44 or that's four, bleh, whatever it is, 6.66 uh, it's always a fun number and uh, square root of m squared meter squared is meters per second which is good because this is supposed to be a velocity note this will only get me a magnitude it does not get me a direction so I mean technically it's plus or minus 6.66 but um, I asked for the speed which is good because that's all you're ever going to get out of an uh, out of an energy problem so I don't include the direction okay so note that this is less than the initial speed which makes sense because it is in the final it is higher than it was to keep energy the same if, I'm, if I've gained gravitational potential energy in the system, I must have lost kinetic. So I must be going slower than I was, and I am. 6.66 is, in fact, less than 8. So this is one example. Um, I'm going to stop this video and do a different example.